What is a mindset engineer? Fantastic question, and thank you for the question. This gives me the opportunity to talk about this, which I love. All right. So engineering, I've discussed this in another video, engineering is the process of going from ideas to tangible results in the physical world. Whatever happens between an idea and a tangible result in the physical world is called engineering. So a person may have an idea about flying, you know, that's just an idea. And there has never been an airplane, a hot air balloon, nothing like that. But there's the idea that I could fly like a bird, maybe with a contraption around my body. And um, it's just an idea. So then we use whatever principles, whatever science, whatever knowledge is available. And I create this thing that allows me to travel through the air like a bird. And nowadays, I would call that an airplane or an aircraft. And whatever it took to produce that device, the contraption, the thing, is called engineering. So as science evolves, as mathematics and physics changes, as we learn more about nature, about material, the nature of engineering, the types of things that engineers do, changes, right? Different tools become available, computer simulations, I mean, all kinds of things cause the field of engineering to change. But what remains constant is the definition. We always go from an idea to a tangible result and the process is called engineering so people say well what does it have to do with the mind with lifestyle with the mindset you know well the point is that there are certain principles that we use in engineering that also apply to the creation of the lifestyle that you actually want to live the life that you would love to live as opposed to the life you've got so the idea here is not to live a default lifestyle. The idea here is to create what you want, an intentional life. And we can do that by trial and error. In a sense, we're all doing that already, right? But with engineering principles, we can actually be much more intentional, much more scientific about it. And we can get results faster by using certain principles. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. It's not all there is to it, but I'll give you an example. So when you look at um, the simplest form of control system is composed of four elements. And if you want to have a picture in your mind of what I mean by a control system, an automatic control system, think of a thermostat, the type that goes on the wall to control the temperature in the room. And you may have one of those and it might be computer controlled, it might be connected to your app and your phone and the internet and this and that, you know, very, but in the, at the most basic function of the thermostat, only has four basic elements. Everything else has been layered on it to make it easier for you to interact with it. But the basic idea of a thermostat or the most basic form of an automatic control system has four elements, a sensor, a set point, a comparator, and an actuator. So in the case of the thermostat, the sensor is a thermometer, so we can sense the temperature in the room. A set point is the temperature you want. You set the temperature that you want. It has a comparator that compares the temperature in the room to the set point, And it generates what's called an error signal or the difference between the set point and the actual temperature. And that drives an actuator, which could be the air conditioning or the furnace to bring the temperature up or down. So that's a control system. And you can leave that running by itself. The weather outside can change and the, the system will adjust and will keep the temperature in the room relatively constant, right? That, that's why it's called an automatic control system. You don't have to get up, turn off the heater, turn on the heater every time it gets cold or hot. It's an automatic system. All right. Let's use that idea to the concept of, you know, a mindset engineer. So we know that our lifestyle, the way we live the physical life, is a projection of this thing that we call self-image or mindset or inner game. It's unconscious. The inner game is unconscious. Just as when you go to the movie theater and you're watching the screen, you're watching the movie on the screen, the actual movie comes from a little box that we call the projector behind you. And the little box reflects in this analogy the unconscious nature of the source 
of what we see projected on the screen as the movie. So we live as we live because inside of us we have those ideas and those ideas how they got there it's a long story a lot of it has to do with childhood education authority figures what you've been told but a lot of it we're born with this has been amply studied you know babies are born with a temperament and the temperament comes from somewhere and we can talk about this later as a hypnotist we talk a lot about past lives and uh, in a different video, I'll, I'll talk more, I'll, I'll address that question more, more um, head on. But for now, let's just say that, you know, we have this self-image, we have these ideas inside of us, which will then become projected into this thing that we call my life. And if I, if I, so then I observe my life, that would be like the sensor in the thermostat. I observe my life, how much money I have, how many friends I have, what kind of relationships I have, I observe, I sense. And I compare that, see a comparator, I compare that to the self-image. The self-image would be the set point. All of this is happening unconsciously. And if my life is as I unconsciously see myself, no error signal is generated and everything remains the same. I continue living as I have because everything is good. That's how it is. That's how life is. But if that unconscious image, the self-image, is different from what I'm experiencing, it generates a huge amount of discomfort, that error signal, which then causes us to act and do things differently. You see the actuator in the furnace, you know, in, 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 the, in the auto control system? See, there's an error signal, there's a discrepancy between what I'm observing and what the set point shows me should be. Going back to our lives, I look around, I don't like my life, I have two choices, well, three actually. I can accept it and learn to live with it and say there's nothing I can do. That in of itself is the result of a mindset. Or I can say I'm going to be very diligent and apply a lot of willpower to change my life. And yes, it will work, provided that we can be very, very consistent. They used to say that it takes 23 days to build a habit. Then I heard it takes 30 days to build a habit. Now, the latest I heard, it takes 100 days to build a habit. It's difficult because we tend to default back to the way we used to do things. But if you can make changes and stick with it for two, three, four, five, six months in some cases, it will take, eventually that becomes your new normal. You change your self-image. What happens is that it's difficult to do that because we get distracted and we default back to the norm. So then the alternative to all of this would be to change the self-image directly at the level of the subconscious mind, which requires access to the subconscious. So now we're going to use hypnosis. We're going to use deep dialogue and hypnosis. We're going to make changes to the self-image and we're going to observe what happens in the person's life and see if, if they're converging. Okay. My life is changing, but not quite yet. Okay, let's continue to craft this inner game, this mindset, so that we begin to get the results in our lives that we really want. And that process is an engineering process because we've got to be able to translate what's happening to what kind of inner game, to what kind of mindset would produce the results that we want. And we continuously look back and forth between the self-image and the results that we get and we keep on changing the mindset. We keep on changing the mindset so that we can actually generate the results that we want. A lot of people do this and they get excellent results and you can too. And the easiest places to see this is actually things like weight loss and prosperity levels, you know, because it's very obvious, very clear, very evident when we begin to get results. So, Another way of saying the same thing is we use this thing called end result imagery. But end result imagery is a metaphor that we use to change the self image to then produce results in our physical lives. We're talking about the same thing with different terminology. And I'm using all of this terminology because you may have heard me use all of these terms in different videos and different classes. And here it is putting it all together for you where you realize, well, we're talking about the same thing all these years. Yes. The change comes from 
within. If you don't change what's going on inside of you, that inner game stuff, either we're going to have to accept living as we're living now, or we're going to have to use a ton of willpower to make changes in our lives. It's a hit or miss thing. Changing your self-image is a sure way of changing your life. All right? So, um, if you have other questions, keep, keep them coming in because I love answering these questions. So, fantastic questions. Thank you. Blessings to all of you.